Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 513 for Wednesday the 19th of July 2017. It's so nice to have you here. Tonight it's just me and Sasha. Jeff couldn't be here with us tonight, so you know everything's going to go wrong. But we're <laughs> going to try looking at Cody. We've got some exciting things going on with our Cody channel. Things may work, things may not, but... We're going to take a stab at it for you tonight. We've also got a couple of your comments, questions, which we're going to tackle as well. So looking yes. forward to those. Stick around till the end of the show. And Sasha's got news for us. That's right. Some intriguing stories and lots of them this week. That's true. Keep them coming, folks. Thank you very much for sending them in. What do you got? Here we go. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Autonomous race cars are now a thing. A newly demonstrated 3D printed heart works much like a real one. We have found our greatest weapon against the coming robot apocalypse. Google is giving Glass one more try. Microsoft SQL Server 2017's first release candidate has landed and yes, it runs on Linux. Support for Ubuntu 16.10 ends tomorrow and in a rather comical social experiment, a UK Wi-Fi provider has tricked users into agreeing to a thousand hours of community service. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5.TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in live every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category 5.TV. Category 5.TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cap 5.TV slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, Cat 5.TV slash IAIB. Yay. Welcome to the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 513. And uh, we've got a great show planned out for you. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I am Sasha Dermatis. Nice to see you. We've got a couple of viewer uh, comments, questions that have come in. Uh, one of the cool things that we have in operation right now, Sasha, is mm -hmm. our community forum. Very so. cool. I am excited about this because... We had a forum way back in the day, and it was a lot to maintain. It was hard to keep up with it, and it ended up going by the wayside when, like, version 6 of our website came out. Then, you know, we've been in, on version 7 for a couple of years, and uh, the forum was relaunched just recently. So what does it mean? You can log mm -hmm. into the viewer community forum and participate in conversations with other viewers, with myself, with other um, cast members here at the show. Uh, you can ask your questions for the show, and we have a feature right now where you can submit pictures of yourself watching Category 5 TV or uh, share with the community what your setup looks like, um, and we would love to see those. So if you head on over to our website, Category5.tv, click on Interact, and you'll see the community forum there. We've got Category 5 Technology TV there. We've got uh, all of our shows, New Every Day is there, mm -hmm. The Pixel Shadow. We've also got NEMS, uh, which is the Nagios uh, Enterprise Monitoring Server. Um, so that's the... Uh, uh, support forum for that as well. So lots of cool things there. And do check out our website, category5.tv. It's a great way to uh, to find out uh, more about our shows and see the content that we provide. Awesome. So what's new? Good week? I had a great week. Yeah. Uh, what is new? My wedding's coming up. So it's just very like soon. So you're leaving us in early... Sep early oh. September. I'm getting married September, September. 9th. Okay. Right? So I'm flying into Newfoundland September 6th. Oh, Okay. And hitting the ground running because wow. I'll tell you, I'm getting married in a town where the population is like 300. Really? Not even like 300. The population so are they is, all coming? is 300. <laughs> <laughs> so the only place I can really get decorations, and I have three days to do it, the only place I can get decorations is like a, it's a dollar store kind of sort of situation. Oh, because you've got to get them there. I have to get them there. I can't really fly in oh. with too much. My sister, who got married last year, Beth. Yeah. Who I think you might have met. Hi, Beth. <laughs> um, she's lending me a bunch of her lightweight decorations. Is that she can, in the can... area? Oh, no. she's. You're going to bring them with you. I'm going to bring them with she's me. She's out west, isn't she? She's doing... Her and her husband... I have like a crazy family of intrepid travelers. But... <laughs> 
Her and her husband decided they didn't want to live in Toronto any longer, okay. so they put all of their stuff into storage a couple of months ago and decided they would do a road trip all the way around North America. No way. So they started oh, Beth, in Toronto. So cool. They ended up in Whitehorse. They spent uh, some time with Colleen, who I know you've yep. met. Yes. Yep. Um, spent some time with Colleen, went down the West Coast and across, and then their plan is, and hopefully it works out, <laughs> to be in Newfoundland in time for the wedding. Wow. Yeah. So they're in their travels. That's cool. Yeah. So, so you're going to be gone from us for a couple weeks? Two and, episodes in a row. And are we going to be Sasha Dermatis after that I'm going to go to Sasha Rickman, I think. Sasha Rickman. Now, why would you choose to go with Rickman? Is This, this is a famous name. So is there any kind of connection? Well, there is a connection. <laughs> I'll be marrying a Rickman. But yes. Dave also is a relative of Alan Rickman's, which I don't know that everybody knows that. But they're cousins, you know. That's so cool. Yeah. I wish he was still with us. I wish he was still with you us. Could totally I could have invited him. Up with an interview. And I could have invited for the wedding. Oh. Not that the other, like all of the Rickmans are totally invited. Oh, they're totally like, cool. They're and all they're totally super equally as awesome as Alan Rickman was. <laughs> but Alan Rickman, I mean, people, viewers from all around the world will recognize the name. Mm-hmm. Um, what has he been in? I mean, oh, uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, and uh, Love Actually. Love Actually. That yeah. was a big one for me. So he wasn't a good He's guy in Love Actually. one of those actors, actually. too, was one of those actors where you always recognize him. Right, exactly. And you always remember, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I know that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Rickman. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be Sasha Rickman. I'm going to change my middle name to Alan, just for fun. (laughs) I'm like, can you do that? (laughs) No. Wait a minute, is that in the rules? It's easier to spell, too, to be honest with you. (laughs) It's a little bit easier to spell, pronounce. I know that uh, we do have some blooper takes of you even mispronouncing your own name. It's a difficult name, Dermatis, and then you have to explain how it's not a skin disease. Yes, and then you have important. to explain to understand that right this is the first thing that she had to explain to dave when they first Hi, started dating my name is dermatis not dermatitis um and then you spell it like when i when people ask how to spell it over the phone especially it's you really say, difficult Dear me itis <laughs> so i say d-i-r right me it is me it is that's, that's the one yeah me it is okay and then they get confused but whatever now you're just gonna be like rickman rickman sound it out yeah. Don't be a fool. Spell like it sounds, Rickman. Why wouldn't I change? <laughs> why wouldn't I change that? That's perfect. <laughs> Sasha Rickman. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's that's, that's cool. That's so you're gonna be in. away for a little bit. Um, Two weeks. Yeah. Cool stuff. How about cool. you? Uh, what's new with me? Well, we've had uh, just a lot of adventures, and this is summer, right? So we've got like we're, we got some flight time coming. The kids, my two oldest, just yeah. got paper routes each of them so their first so job cool. so now we're like we're looking at um and and these are you know my my son is nine turning 10 uh, next week and my daughter is 12 just turned in june mm-hmm. and um so this is their first job obviously and we're looking at bank accounts and things like this yeah. for direct deposit these days because that's how it works what a great opportunity I had it's a paper actually kind of neat i had a paper route i loved it yeah yeah it was my it's thing. a good way for them to get uh, a kind of like a quote-unquote allowance without it coming coming out of <laughs> mom and dad's pockets. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it shows responsibility. Yeah, they get to learn that kind of stuff. And it's routine, and they know that every two weeks they've got a paycheck coming in. And, and this is straight delivery. There's no collection, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Nice Collection is difficult. No, these days it's all digital. So they've got computer software that keeps track of how many papers were delivered, how many flyers were delivered, and then oh, they just nice. direct deposit into the account. So your step counter is on your phone, right? Yes. Are you just going to like throw your phone along with that? <laughs> just, here, take this with you, Yeah, kids. take this, Tally. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that good today, though, Sash. You got me beat. I got like, ooh... 2,554 steps today. Okay. I, I have hit 10,000 on occasion. I have moves of friends and family. Right. I've seen that, actually. I yep. see it. I take so. screenshots whenever it happens just so I can prove it in case anyone doesn't believe me. I took a screen, screenshot of my steps the other day, and I didn't want to move even for the rest of the day because I was at 11,111. It's like, I made it. Whatever. It was like I'm sitting. All, like, all Dave ones. Dave shows up and says, what are you doing? Why are you being so lazy? Just be like. Check the phone. <laughs> Look. Yeah. And so like, ah, yeah. I'm in, I go in challenges because I have my Fitbit, right? So then yeah. I'm like, I'm fiercely a competitor. I can't just let it slide. You even have a competitive toothbrush. Uh, yeah. It tells you if you're brushing. Enough. Uh, your, she has brushing steps. 
I get badges. <laughs> that counts for two. I get badges, but I here's the thing. You get I badges. I don't like it because it doesn't. I do. Lo I love my toothbrush. Okay. Love yeah, my toothbrush. It's amazing. I do not like the app because the app, you have to activate the app for it to sync. It doesn't do just like sync in the background. You have to open it. You have to open the app. Oh, you must be able to run in the background. Come on now. Toothbrush manufacturers, come on, get it right. I know. I want it we to just We send... actually live in a world though that you're syncing, you're, you're ticked off that you can't sync your toothbrush to your phone. I have to do an extra step. Seriously? I, when I weigh myself in the morning, because I have a Fitbit scale, when I weigh so myself, my oh, weight man. automatically uploads to my phone. How come when I brush my teeth, it doesn't automatically what upload? What kind of a world do you live in? Whatever. You're so connected. I'm super robotic. Do you even have light switches? Like, do you just... No, well, my phone just can tell where I am in a room and it just it turns no, it on. Are you kidding? Nice. <laughs> I would love that. Robot making grandma's <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> Hey, it's nice to see the chat room. Nice to see so many folks uh, joining us tonight. We do have some fun for you tonight. We're going to be looking at Cody, as I mentioned at the top of the show. And uh, are we ready to get into it? Yes. What's Cody? Any guesses? Cody is... Remember the XBMC? No. All right. Well, what do you think about Cody? Cody is where you go. You log on to Cody to watch TV shows and stuff. Eh, you're close. Because okay. you've heard of it because people talk about Cody because... Watch can, it on Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that's one of the set-top kind of connected boxes. But in reality, uh, Cody is a piece of software. It's open source, and uh, it is supported by app developers from all over the world. What it means, though, is that you can install it on your computer, whatever platform you have, or you can set up, for example, a Cody Raspberry Pi. Right. So now you've got a connected HDMI output with a Raspberry Pi 3. Get yours at cat5.tv slash pi. You see how I did that? Yeah. It's pretty yeah. nice. And then you install Kodi on that, and you've got a multimedia center that is absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, the interface is great. And the nice thing about it is it uses third-party content. So where we've looked at Plex in the past, you need to have a Plex media server. Mm-hmm. So it's a server component with a front end and things like that. Plex is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but it's a different, whole different paradigm. Right. What Kodi is, is it taps into the, the content that already exists in the world. Okay. So, for example, if you want to watch Twit TV, uh, This Week in Tech, you can install their channel. And okay. now, when you open that up, boom there's all their content. Got it. Right? So you're not having to download the content, put it on a server, and then stream it to your devices through the interface. No. Right. It gets it from their servers. Right. Similarly, you can watch Category 5 TV Network and all of our shows directly through Kodi if you install our add-on. So we're going to look at that tonight. We're going to look at, first and foremost, how to get Kodi on our system. I'm using uh, Debian 9. I've just got a kind of a vanilla installation that we've installed uh, over the past couple of weeks. And then we're going to install Kodi. We're going to get it up and running. We're going to see what it looks like, how it works. And uh, then we're going to get looking at how you can get Category 5 Technology TV uh, on that device. So let's awesome. get right into it. This is my desktop, so welcome to Debian Linux. Pretty straightforward. Um, yours may look a little bit different, and you may use a different package manager, but I use Synaptic Package Manager. That's my all-time favorite. So uh, let's get in there, and we're going to do this through the GUI just because Kodi generally is you know, a GUI application. That's the mm -hmm. whole idea here. Um, so that's how we're going to do it, but of course you can use the terminal as well. Uh, but you're going to need the GUI for Kodi, so... Uh, we're going to do a search for K O D I, and basically, you know, X D uh, was it X D M C was the original uh, was the original name. So if you've heard of that, um, it's mm. been uh, renamed Cody a long time ago. Yeah, I know it's DMC. <laughs> it's been that long. Totally. I only know it as Cody. I, yeah. It's Cody. Cody. Just, you know, this this a new newer version uh, versus say X B M C. Okay, so Kodi is in the repositories. You notice I just searched for it, K-O-D-I, and I can just click to install that. This is how it works on Debian uh, and on Linux in general. You don't have to find the download. You don't have to get onto the website. Oh. You can. It's Kodi.tv, K-O-D-I.tv. If you're using a different platform, if you're on Mac, Windows, uh, make sure you head on over there. You can download it and install it on your computer on Linux. I don't need to do that. I can just do a quick search in my repositories, uh, through my repositories, and hit Mark for installation. Look like it had a bunch of other um, little uh, requirements that were going to be installed as well. Then I can hit apply and it says, hey, here's what's going to be installed, all this kind of stuff. Cool. It's going to get all the stuff that's required in order to install Kodi. It downloads it through the internet connection 
and installs it on my computer. It only has four seconds remaining, Sasha. It's so much easier this way than it is on like Windows and, and such. Because I know Dave spent... She's a Windows user. Well, no, I have Linux. You have Linux because I put it on there, but you never even take this home. It just sits there. <laughs> what? what do you have I at use home? my phone. Yeah, okay, you use your phone. That's Linux. I don't have a computer at home. Your Dave phone is does. Linux? What do you got? A Samsung? What do I have? No, that's an LG, an LG. G6. Yeah. So you've got Linux. Oh. Android. Android. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But uh, Dave Dave downloaded Cody at home, and it took forever. Oh, like well, mine's took, already done, Sash. Yeah. It so, changes applied. It's done. It's go. ready to go. You want to S- boot it up and see how it looks? Super cool. Yeah. Slight Linux bias. A slight Linux bias. Okay, close this. <laughs> Close this, and now Linux should say, hey, Cody's installed, right? So if I type Cody, what do I got? Cody. Where do I find it on the menu on Cinnamon? Let's see. Sound and video? There it is. Cody. Let's bring it up. Beautiful. Your library is currently empty. That's how I imagine Cody speaks. (laughs) In order to populate it with some personal media, enter file section. Add a media source to configure it. After this source has been added and indexed, you will be able to browse your library. What's that telling you? You can play your local media as well. So you want to take this and okay. make it a part of your wedding ceremony. You can add your photos, your videos, all that kind of stuff. Put it together into a playlist right. and use Cody to play it. So this allows you to add local files so that you can just you know, put them in yourself. What do we got? We got TV shows, music, music videos, TV, a whole bunch of stuff. Add-ons is something that's really, really cool about Kodi because add-ons allow us to add extensions and plugins to Kodi that give us access to content that exists. Okay. So sometimes, so when you hear, you know, somebody, you hear news stories that Kodi has, you know, somebody has been arrested for selling Kodi boxes or something, it's because the add-ons that they're using allow the distribution of illegal content. So the key thing is to find oh, okay. legitimate content and right. add-ons for Cody. But it is, you know, it's an extension-based application, so you, you can get add-ons for it that will allow you to gain right. access to content. So hypothetically, if somebody was mm. having problems with their Cody right now, it would be because they, were, they had add-ons that were like pirating? Possibly. Possibly? I, well, if like, they had legal difficulties with it. So, but you deal with yeah. something like Category 5 Technology TV. You're good. The content is freely available okay. and you're golden. If you download an application or an add-on that gives you access to um, illegal content live streaming from your local cable channel, well, it may not be legit. Okay, so you see that out of the box, there's really nothing to watch. So you're going to be like, well, <laughs> what do I do? And of course, you can add your local content. So that's pretty cool. By adding your local content, you're going to be able to watch your own video files, family movies and things like right. that. Um, DVDs that you've ripped to your computer, which is to copy the DVD to your computer, decrypt the files. We've shown you how to do that on the show here. Um, so that's a, another way. So I've exited there because what I want to show you... So now we've kind of taken a quick glimpse at a blank interface. Right. It's a clean slate. Cody is installed. It's ready to go for us. But what can we actually do with it? Well, as it is add-on based, we can find add-ons. There are official add-ons on Cody.tv. Head on over there if you want to find some. Search for your favorite shows. Search for um, your favorite networks online. And you'll be able to find a lot of great content for us. If you head over to our website, uh, let's get onto Firefox here. So I'm going to bring up our website, Category5.tv. And once you're there, now, I haven't quite... I'm, I'm the developer behind the website and the whole infrastructure and everything. Right. I haven't quite found where to put this. So for now, at least as we broadcast this um, July 19th, 2017, um, I have a link that I've just placed here so that you can gain access to this. I'm going to eventually find a spot for it on the menu. But right now, if you head right to the bottom of the web page, there is a button with the RSS logo. Do you see that orange one there? Yes. It turns orange when I hover over it. There is also a button over here under links called subscribe. So either one of those is going to take you to the same place. That's where we want to go. Again, Mm -hmm. I'm going to find a spot on our website that makes it a little more obvious, but I wanted to show you where it is right now because it's always going to be there. When you're watching in the future, you'll be like, wow, that's where they had it at first? Yeah, (laughs) it's still there. We're going to leave it down at the bottom, so that's what I want to show you. But I'm eventually going to find a nice spot on the the menu too. Very responsive site, so it's designed so that it works on phones, it works on tablets, it works on computers. And what I run into when I create too many menu items is that it becomes too wide 
right. for certain platforms. So really working on streamlining that. That's neither here nor there as far as related to the episode. But you'll notice that when you go to the subscribe page, we've got Roku, Cody, Plex. We've got RSS feeds for all of our shows as well as a consolidated feed, which gives you access to all of our content in a nice consolidated RSS feed. Right. So that means you can catch an episode of the Category 5.TV newsroom. You can catch an episode of Category 5 Technology TV. You can catch an episode of New Every Day. You can catch an episode of The Pixel Shadow. Mm -hmm. You can catch an episode of uh, the Immersive Nature Sounds, as it's now <laughs> called. It used to be Nature Sounds of Ontario, Canada, but because it's turned 360 video, right. it has been changed to Immersive Nature Sounds, nice. and Season 2 is coming soon. And you still have the Drop Drone that. Zone, right? We have the Drone Zone in there as well. We've got mm -hmm. clips from the Category 5 Technology TV show. So all of these are put in the consolidated feed as well. So Cody has access to that through an add-on. So here's how we do it. Cody, watch on Cody, download the Cody plugin. All I have to do is click on that, and it's going to give me a file. So what do I want to do? Do I want to open it? No, I want to save it. All right, oh, okay. so now that has given me a copy of that file called plugin.video.category5-master.zip. What a god-awful name. Horrible. Horrible. But now you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's Git. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've downloaded that. It's ready to go. Bring up Cody. And once we're in here, let's go into settings. And let's see what we've got here. So we've got all these kinds of things. Player settings, media settings, PVR, service settings, system settings, profile settings, skin settings, interface settings, system information, event log, file manager. Wow. Lots to choose from here. Where am I going to find my ad on Sash? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Media settings. General note. Library. No. PVR. There's not just a general search. A general search. That would be nice. Interface. Skin settings. Profile settings. System settings. What about that file? Add-ons. Oh, there you go. So one thing that I'm spotting right out the gate here is that on my Debian 9 system, the mm -hmm. version, I the interface is completely different from right. Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. So I'm on Ubuntu at home, Ubuntu 16.10. Okay. No, 17.04. Okay. And the interface is completely different. So we've got to kind of do a little digging to get there, but we're going to get there. So system settings on this particular version and then add-ons. Let's see what we get. Um, so do we get the option to install right here? Manage dependency, updates, show notifications, reset above settings. No, this is not what we need. Expert, add-ons. Chat room, what do you say? Solbu or the foo? Uh, Garby? Where do we find the uh, the option to install a plugin here, an add-on? That's what we're looking for. File manager, finding all your files. Nice. Well, let's find add-ons. Well, I can do that, I guess. Enter add-on browser. Okay. Recently updated. Install oh. for there we go. That's what you wanted. So yeah, the interface is very, very different here on Debian than than mm -hmm. what I'm used to on Ubuntu. But we, we you know we'll find it. So add-ons, enter add-on browser, and then you see install from zip file. So on my Ubuntu system, on the other hand, I go into settings and mm -hmm. I go add-ons and I go install from zip file. Right. This is so they've changed things or maybe improved slightly, things. Slightly, I guess. Sure. But we find what we need. So install from zip file, because remember, the download link gave us a zip file. So for security, uh, installation of add-ons from unknown sources is disabled. Settings. Uh, show notifications. Unknown sources, we want to turn that on. Because, hey, Category 5 TV's GitHub page is technically an unknown source. But that's, uh, that's OK in this particular instance, just as anything. Be careful what you download, what you you know, where you get it. Um, ours obviously is supported by Category Five TV. So install from zip file now. Browse to our download folder, which is in Home, and then Downloads, and there's the file plugin. Video. Category Five dash Master, and you'll see Category Five TV instantly was installed. So if I go back, uh, no, pardon me. If I hit Escape, now I see Category oh, Five there we TV. Go. Uh, on my menu system here. So click on that, and you'll see it's going to load up. Should load up pretty quick if all went well. 
Here we go. Sort by episode. Let's see. What's happening? Let's see. Back. TV. Videos. Oh, Sparkly Ball says the gear wheel says standard. Change to expert to get the full range of settings. I, I, you know, I, things like that make me wonder why we ever decided to make Category 5 a live TV show. <laughs> People love live. <laughs> the food yes. loves live. <laughs> what is, you know, is this the same version that you guys see when you bring up uh, Cody? This is completely different than what I'm used to, but it's not, uh, it's not bringing up our channel list. Needless to say. I feel like we may have jinxed it. I think we said something about it being like a good, easy show. This is going to be I just know, so right? smooth. Yeah, we'll just show you the Cody add-on. We did things like that. Add -on. To we be said fair, those words. Yeah, we had... Now, I saw... like a, I, I get a little tiny flash there. It's not how it's supposed to be, folks. See that? I saw the list of tech clips and everything else. Um, so we've got some community members that are quite well-versed at, at this. So mm -hmm. The Foo, have you seen this before? Um, Sparkly. What about Solbu? Solbu, Solbu, can't Solbu? Even say it now. Solbu is here, yeah. um, who is one of our contributors as well. Um, so, do, do, do. click into the Cat Five app, and you get the menu. Well, see, that's What's the idea. This? Yeah. Hmm. Says that they're using a different theme, aka skin, from within Cody. But you know what? How many times have we had a show where we've had to come back a week later and say, okay, now we're going to try again. Let's uh, give it another go. I don't mind that. I hate that, you know, we lose part of the show for I, it. But. I do want to just say, like, off the record, on the record, mm. that every single time, it's just you and just I us. doing a show. Like, check That's back. We have every single time, it's just the two of us. There is, a, there is an issue. Our worst show ever was when nobody was, else was here. It was just exactly. us, and we are in front of the camera. And every time. Worst show ever. Google it. You'll find it. <laughs> we'll come up number one. <laughs> Wait, what can you do? So, you know what? We're going to move on, uh, but do uh, try out Cody. Okay, folks? Um, everything should work. Uh, we do have confirmation in the chat room. Um, that things are working for other users. Maybe it's something to do with my laptop. Part of a live broadcast is that we do everything live, in real time, so we can have issues that um, you may not have at home. You may, I, I haven't seen this on my systems right. at home, uh, so it could be something to do with my computer. Who knows? I, yeah, I particularly love Cody. We have it at home, but We're I We're going to try it out again, yeah. but n th the next time around, I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate the installation separately of everything else, because now there's probably something that I need to tweak or figure out you can do which is a bummer and sometimes you're going to hit these kinds of things i think this is where linux excels though is that you know what what do you see me do in a situation like that is immediately i turn to our chat room right I turn to the forums i turn to the official wiki and i start getting support from the communities and i think linux excels at that open source excels at that mm -hmm. because i know that when we sign off tonight even though we've had some trouble with this tonight and i'll throw the laptop across the room out of anger that's fine later <laughs> later we'll wait till after we sign <laughs> off um, but fact is, is I know that I'm going to be able to then get in the chat room we're going to figure it out we're going to get it up and going and then I'm going to come back to you another week and we're going to be able to show you how it works Which and I'm going to come back and report why things didn't why work why it didn't work That's the exactly thing, because we want you to be able to in the future be able to look back on this and say oh wait I'm having that same problem and that would be great find the fix <laughs> you don't have to find the fix we will have found the fix for you <laughs> that's the idea so, uh, in the meantime, you want to head over to the newsroom? Why, uh, Are you looking at your invisible watch? I know. I don't have a watch. But I have a Fitbit. Yeah. Is it that time already? It is that time. So, if you oh, could take really? it away. I certainly can. All right. All right. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.tv newsroom. Autonomous race cars are now a thing. A newly demonstrated 3D printed heart works much like a real one. We have found our greatest weapon against the coming robot apocalypse. Google is giving Glass one more try. Microsoft SQL Server 2017's first release candidate has landed and yes, it runs on Linux.
Support for Ubuntu 16.10 ends tomorrow. And in a rather comical social experiment, a UK Wi-Fi provider has tricked users into agreeing to a thousand hours of community service. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories for the week of July 19, 2017. The sleek, low-slung, driverless Robo race car was on display in New York City for the Formula E races this weekend, but it was the workhouse DevBot that took the track. You can recognize DevBot by its bubble-like cockpit where a human sits ready to take the wheel if the autonomous car needs a literal hand. Given Formula E's one-day structure with qualifying sessions early in the day and the race in the afternoon, Robo Race is able to take advantage of the empty track in the middle of the day for demonstrations of its artificial intelligence system on wheels. DevBot did a practice run early Saturday morning, then spent an hour taking laps in front of the crowd in the afternoon. DevBot has an array of sensors plus advanced GPS for navigating the track, which is not programmed into the car's computers. It reads the track and learns the route as it goes, which means DevBot drives much more slowly than the Formula E cars. The driver took control for a lap, likely to train the AI at speed, and then an in-car camera behind the driver's shoulder was projected onto large screens around the track so spectators could see if and when the driver had to put hands on the wheel. The completely driverless Robo race car did, did take a lap on its own in Paris, but it was moving more slowly than DevBot in New York. There's no official word on when Robo race vehicles will be ready to actually race. There was an optimistic idea that the field of 20 driverless cars would be taken to the track in the 2017-2018 season, but DevBot's demonstration on Saturday showed that a fully autonomous race later this year is unlikely. Well, there you have it. That is cool, <laughs> though. Can you imagine sitting I, down and watching race cars that are autonomously I would love that. That'd I would be neat. I would not want to be the driver, like the person, like the person, the non-driver driver. Well, because then you would just be struggling Devbot with. Devbot has do you need that, that, but the the other cars, like the one that was yeah. on display, like this guy here, mm -hmm. there's no driver cockpit. That I love. That one does not have it. Plain and simple. Incredible. So imagine seeing those guys go around the track. I mean, once they go around one slow lap to learn the to learn the lay of the land, and but you know then, what. What? Then we can get the thrill of seeing the race happen mm -hmm. with no risk. Exactly. At least no risk to the drivers. And I would assume that they would have it safely set up for the spectators. And if autonomous cars can work in these conditions, right, with cars obviously weaving in oh, and yeah. out, right, at they some They can communicate point, at a subconscious computer level. Exactly. They could be like, okay, we're going by the mayor right now. Let's do like this like crazy cutoff. Scenes. Exactly. Well, it, I mean, if they can do things like that, oh. it gives me hope for the future. And I know that there's been some hiccups. This is what it took, folks. Autonomous race cars give Sasha hope for the future. Hope for the future. I'm not mocking you. I'm agreeing with you. It, do, it, works, it works really well <laughs> in the fact that, okay, so if you have autonomous vehicles like this that can weave in and out of traffic 
on a racetrack. Yeah. What if oh, what if the you development ha- model? Right. Yeah. What if you could then have cars that are supposed to be autonomous cars on the roads learn how to take evasive like strategy maneuvers, maybe have some autonomous I don't know, ambulances out there or something that could really dodge, get through traffic to people faster. I like it. Cool. Not that you want to have Lots a race great... car ambulance, but... <laughs> Maybe. One day. Once they perfect it. Yes. Absolutely. Eventually. The science of prosthetics has been advancing by leaps and bounds over the last few years, and research into soft robotics has been especially complementary. The same techniques that go into making a robot arm that flexes and turns like a real one can go into making more complex, subtle organs, like the heart, as Swiss researchers have dis- demonstrated. One problem with artificial hearts is that the metal and plastic me- mechanisms can be difficult to integrate with tissue or damage the blood because of their unnatural movement style. A small team at ETH, led by a doctoral student Nicholas Kors, has created what they say is the first artificial heart that's entirely soft, with its pumping mechanism achieved by causing the silicone ventricles to pump very much like a real heart. The heart was created using a 3D printed method that lets researchers make a complex inner structure while still using soft, flexible materials as the structure. As the structure. The whole thing is basically one single part, so there's no need to worry about how different internal mechanisms fit together. This heart is a proof of concept, not built for actual implantation, so the materials they made it from don't last more than a few thousand beats, which is about a half an hour. But the plan, obviously, is to have materials and designs that work for much longer than that. I even... I think to myself, okay, so say you don't get a, an artificial heart that would be a long-term situation, but what if you're in a hospital waiting for a transplant uh-huh. and you only need a month before, or, you know, you only need two months, you're, right? Yeah, waiting for transplants. Yeah. Interesting. Right, that it'll bridge the gap because you yeah. hear a lot about people who just, like, the transplant just didn't come in time. Right? They only needed yeah. it at like a small amount of time. So, yeah, maybe this 3D printed heart might not last 30 years like a, a, like a human heart would, but it, it would last 30 days, like, which is sure. enough if to they get need you more in. More than dialysis, but not yeah. as much as an actual heart, an organ. Yeah. Then, yeah, that could work. Huh. Good job, guys. Patent it. <laughs> A security robot in Washington, D.C. suffered a watery demise after falling into a fountain by an office building. The stricken robot, made by Nightscope, was spotted by pedestrians whose photos of the aftermath quickly went viral on social media. For some, the incident seemed to sum up the state of 21st century technology. We were promised flying cars. Instead, we got suicidal robots, wrote one worker from the building on Twitter. Peter Singer, author of Wired for War, a book about military robotics, commented, Steps are our best defense against the robo-apocalypse. It is not the first accident involving night scopes patrolling robots, which are equipped with various instruments, including face recognition systems, high-definition video capture, infrared and ultrasonic sensors. Last year, a 16-month-old toddler was run over by one of the autonomous devices in Silicon Valley shopping in a Silicon Valley shopping center. Don't worry, his injuries were not serious. And earlier this year, a Californian man was arrested after attacking a night scope robot. That man, who was drunk at the time of the incident, said later he simply wanted to test the machine, according to Nightscope. <laughs> T- test it how? Do that you see my face? So much do you like recognize my Jeff face? Would do. Yeah, <laughs> it totally does. Just testing it. It's fine. Just seeing, you know, poke it. Exactly. Poke it. Prod it. Can you see me now? Push it. Yeah, that that testing the machine. I understand that, but yeah. the sixteen-month-old baby situation. Yeah, I remember that's the story. An that's issue. scary. That's, that's a bit, a bit of an scary. Issue. Yeah. Lucky I- that uh, you know, fortunate. For the parents and for the child that they that, were okay but. and there could have been a real injury like this certainly. thing is 300 pounds yeah so you know that would hurt running over your foot right exactly so it obviously <laughs> needs <laughs> some bugs worked out i still yeah. am in support of the robo cops <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
There we go. They're cute. They look like R two D two. I, I, I love, love them. I think that how I'm great serious. would it be if you had a like if you had a simple okay. complaint, Aww. right? Doesn't that make you sad? Does anyone Aww. else feel sad right I now? I feel sad. If you, but if you had something simple that needed to be done, right? Like it's so great to have a robot to be able to do it. Simple, not walking down the stairs. That's have you ever seen the Doctor Who episode though, where the robots have the smiley emojis and? And the angry emojis, you don't want to get one with an angry emoji. No. No. So, you know, maybe they should it's stop funny. making them. It's funny because I actually really do, like, I suffer, you know, the uncanny, uncanny valley, yes. that whole phenomena? Yeah. I actually suffer pretty bad. Like, I don't like the sure, inflatable flaily arm mans freak me out because they right. look like people having seizures. You're not going to get that from one of these infl- uh, floating yeah. eggs. Though, yeah, see, so but these it make me, like an egg. they it's make me comfortable. to look like a human. Thank, thank goodness. They're, they're adorable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Google is reviving its failed glass project, the smart headset designed to augment everyone's vision as a product for businesses. The internet giant said it is designing an upgraded an upgraded version of the glass headset released in 2013 that will have a better battery life and be more comfortable to wear. The revamped headset will be called Glass Enterprise Edition and is designed for use in industries such as manufacturing and healthcare. Google says it can augment viewer, users' vision with hands-free information as they work. While the company publicly ditched the smart eyewear, stopping sales and deleting the, the Glass social media accounts, Google had quietly kept it alive for the past two years. Google has spent this time working with dozens of partners to create customized software for certain industries and businesses. It has tested the new product in the U.S. with firms including DHL, Doctors at Dignity Health and Agricultural Machinery Manufacturer Agco. The firms reported the tool had helped improve efficiency and reduce the time, and reduce the time taken for administrative tax, tasks. You know that realistically though, all that people are going to do with Google Glass you see that? <laughs> That's what people are going to do. That's all they're going to do. <laughs> That's it. Whoa. No, no I... No. So cute. Okay, now here's what I want. Mm. I want Google Glass. I want it in my life. I work, as you know, in a very busy chiropractic clinic. I see people coming and going all of the time. I'm happy doing this. I want Google Glass to know the names of the people that are walking in in case I... Stop that, Ravi. <laughs> Oh, sorry, were you saying something? Yeah. Okay. Um, in case that there's somebody that I don't re- exactly immediately recognize and know the name of, right? Yeah. I want them to say, like, that would be cool. This is Fred. Yeah. Then I can, hey, Fred, how's it going? Reminds me of. I don't Black want Mirror. him to know that I. Yeah. Black Mirror, remember the it's, episode? Yeah, it's true. With the, where they're, like, you know, on their phones and I yeah. know everything about you just by looking at the phone. That was a good episode. That was a creepy, awesome episode. I sort of want Google Glass. I don't want it to be very obvious (laughs) that I'm wearing it. I don't want, I mean, I guess Google Glass wants you to be advertising them. (laughs) But I I want to to just like connect to one side of my glasses. Mm. That'd be cool. (laughs) Microsoft's long, gentle embrace of Linux continues with the first release candidate of SQL Server 2017. Microsoft said the early release would land in the middle of this year. Arguably, since this is only the RC1 level release, Microsoft's SQL Server on Linux is running late. There's not much detail on what's in the box with with this TechNet blog posts only saying SQL Server 2017 support for Linux includes the same high availability solutions on Linux as Windows as Windows Server, including always on availability groups integrated with Linux native clustering solutions like Pacemaker. There's also Active Directory authentication, so domain joined Windows or Linux client or Linux clients can use their domain credentials to sign into SQL Server. As Microsoft discussed last December when the first public preview landed, getting SQL Server onto Linux needed an abstraction layer, which the company has dubbed Drawbridge. Drawbridge provides a host extension running as Linux application. This initializes SQL PAL, which offers the Windows calls needed to launch SQL Server. It's not only about Linux. The other goodies in the release candidate include analytics in either R or Python, data processing for discovering complex many-to-many relationships and an adaptive 
query processing to the auto tune to auto tune the database. TLS support is also built into the release to encrypt data between the SQL server and clients. Are you an Ubuntu user? If you're using Ubuntu 16.10 Yakety Yak, it hits end of life tomorrow, July July 20th. Released on October 13th, 2016, Ubuntu 16.10 is a short-term release with a nine-month support cycle. That support period is about to end. This means that no further maintenance updates, critical security upgrades, or updated packages will be released by Ubuntu developers and no official support will be given. Third-party developers who distribute software via PPAs or other repositories often end support for EOL release two, releases too. Although the software itself will continue to work, it's highly recommended that you upgrade to a supported version of Ubuntu such as the current short-term release Ubuntu 17.04 or the current LTS release Ubuntu point or Ubuntu 16.04 LTS to ensure you continue getting security updates and critical fixes. The supported upgrade path from Ubuntu 16.10 is to Ubuntu 16 or 17.04. Ubuntu 17.04 continues to be actively supported with security updates and select high-impact bug fixes and will continue to receive them until February of next year. Unwitting customers in the United Kingdom who didn't read the terms and conditions for use of a public Wi-Fi hotspot agreed to perform 1,000 hours of community service, including unclogging sewers and scraping gum off of the street. <laughs> the gag was conceived by Wi-Fi provider Purple. The company inserted the clause into its terms and conditions, the technically legally binding agreement consumers approve in exchange for free in use of internet, though, though few, virtually few had actually read the terms. The company said it did so to call attention to the fact that consumers are regularly agreeing to terms that they might not actually like, including granting access to private inf information and data about their web browsing habits. Other community service tasks agreed to by the users included providing hugs to stray cats and dogs and painting snail shells to brighten up their existence. The agreement also promised a prize to anyone who actually became aware of the prize's existence after reading the terms and conditions, yet after two weeks only one person came forward to claim the prize. This isn't the first time a stunt like this has been pulled. In 2014, cybersecurity firm F-Secure ran a similar experiment in London, London, operating a Wi-Fi hotspot that anyone could use in exchange for their firstborn child. <laughs> yep, the so-called Herod Clause was clearly stated in the terms and conditions and six people still signed up. Though it's not clear how many of them simply disliked their eldest children. Wow. I will tell you, I don't always read my terms and conditions. It's true. So it do? We're yeah, just so sick and tired of it. It turns out I frequently use this free Wi-Fi that's really close to my work. Oh, yeah? And after today reading this story, I thought, <laughs> maybe I should read those terms and conditions. <clears throat> well, I still there's two, there's, yeah. It's kind of twofold, though, isn't it? Because when I connect to a public Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything No, private. you're not doing anything private ever. When no. you're on a public, please don't. Um, don't do it. I mean, people go to a hotel and they use the free Wi-Fi, and then they realize that their accounts have all been hacked. Well, yeah, don't do your online no, banking on free Wi-Fi. Just Wi -Fi. don't. Yeah. Um, but that's that's common sense. Um, but when I go, I don't need like it needs an email address. Well, I just make something up. Like I'm not going to use. I know I'm. That's bad practice, right? Yeah. But I truthfully, know. I know that they're spying on you. Exactly. You know that they're spying I on I use you. it to, like, Why stream Spotify. Like, I do it to, like, do nothing else on my phone. I go, when I go to KFC, yeah. I use the free Wi-Fi. I enter support at kfc.ca as my email address. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and then I bring up their website, and I bring up the coupon, and I save myself $3 on my purchase. <laughs> Just like that. For the win. That's how we do it. Big thanks this week to Sparkly Balls, Roy W. Nash, Garby, the Albuquerque Turkey, and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis.
is the Cody channel working for all y'all? Be interested to know. I know Sol Solbu said that it was working perfectly for them, so that's good. Uh, we released 1.1.0 today, but it is a brand new <laughs> release, which the developer guy should have probably tested before going mm. live on the air. Well, you have, you know... Timing, folks. Timing is crazy. Do you know how busy we are? I produced nine episodes last week. I think that's great. Today is Wednesday, and I've already produced four episodes this week of various shows for Category 5. Mm -hmm. Plus all the other stuff going on, plus spending time with my family. Plus, did I mention I'm a volunteer, and so is Sasha, and so is everybody else? Yeah. Like, so... For you, it's very full-time volunteering. For me, I mean, yeah. I will admit, I just, I'm lucky in that I just, you know, kind of waltz on in here. Yeah. I bike on in here. It was a hot bike ride. Bike it on was, in here once yeah, a week. Yeah, it's really warm out there today. Good day for you to bike home, though, because uh, last week you got rained on. Oh, my. Okay. I know not everybody here lives in Ontario or close to Barrie and understands how badly it rained last Wednesday. It was torrential. It was <laughs> so bad. I, I kid you not. All of a sudden, not. though, it was fine. You left. And then the sky and opened up. Minutes, and then fine. like it was like a lake fell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like, if I jumped in a lake, I would have been drier than I was when I got home. I was biking home. I got about halfway there. The sky opened up. It started raining. It was raining so hard. I was just opening my mouth and getting full, like, full mouthfuls of yeah, water. It like rain. it was in. It was not real life. It was crazy. Yeah. It was so much water that when I got home and I opened my backpack and everything obviously was drenched. I didn't realize for a couple of days, but my wallet was so wet no, that it in the backpack. In the backpack, oh. not that anybody carries checks anymore, but I was carrying checks in my wallet that were completely no demolished like my, all of the paper products in on my person were pulverized yeah, I have, like, stamp cards and stuff that i would be definitely i have nothing Where's my free coffee yeah i've got nothing paper left oh. <laughs> that was my bike at ride. least our money here in canada is made out of plastic that's now. true yeah because it used to be paper and, and i would have been have in trouble then darn hmm well, hey, welcome to the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now, I know, and Sasha knows, that things haven't gone absolutely perfectly with our demonstration tonight, but I hope you've uh, made it this far. We've got a couple of, uh, could we hit some viewer comments, questions, anything at all that has come in? Certainly you've got we any can. for us, hey, go to our website, category5.tv, click on Contact Us. You can submit your viewer questions there, or go to our forum by clicking on Interact. All right, we have Rockaway CCW saw, oh, yeah. saw our episode about Linux desktop environments and says, if you install multiple desktops, you will end up with multiple file browsers, text mm. editors, terminals, calculators, clipboards, calendars, and other utilities that are a part of a DE. Definitely, I would just put it out there. You might also break Cody. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> I wonder if that's it. Oh, maybe. I got some weird stuff going on. That's probably it, actually. Yeah, well. Appropriate. Also, in most DEs, you can click on the clock and see a pop-up calendar. Thank you. I need a calendar. Hey. All of the time. Yeah, we were talking about a calendar. Well, what do we got? So, if I click on the clock, there's a calendar. Pretty simple. That's perfect. Well, it's there's now I know, but you, you know, there's the date. Well, you need it, right? When you're you trying need, to figure yeah, out. you need the date. Yeah, well, you, sure. you need a calendar to figure out, like, three weeks from now. But what is that? it doesn't have, like, scheduling. No. The one that it's we found that, was, that came with it, Yeah, it's got full scheduling and GCAL support. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, Good tip. sync up. Thanks. Sir Wentz. Oh, and I, should oh, I say, should I touch on the desktop environment comment? <laughs> oh, I guess so. Maybe, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we kind of alluded to that uh, because it was brought up in the chat room where if you install a whole bunch of different desktop environments, you're going to get a whole bunch of cruft. I discovered that today as well um, because I was messing with installation of new fonts. And here right. I am in Cinnamon, and it was trying to launch the KDE font installer which oh. wouldn't work on cinnamon and there were all kinds of problems. So, yeah, you could probably have those kinds of troubles would, with Sorry, would you then just want to only ever have one desktop environment? Yeah, I would expect eventually, yeah. But for our experiment, for our intents and purposes, it's to try everything. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out which one we want, then go back, wipe out our system, start from scratch, 
and say, I chose cinnamon. That's the one I want. Right. But my question to you would then be, if you're trying everything, Mm -hmm. are you getting a really accurate depiction of anything? Because they're all... Pretty darn accurate. Okay. Although you may have some trouble. Like, we did have some trouble setting up um, HDMI output on GNOME, which I know was because of some issues with conflicts and things like that, which you probably won't have at home. Okay. Because you're just installing GNOME. Right. Right. So those kinds of things won't be an issue. But uh, but for us... For the most part, it wouldn't for, be... For the sake of the demonstration, I think it worked pretty well. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's random. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, get onto our website, <laughs> Category5.tv. Click on search and type in desktop environment. It was a very cool episode. It was fun. Sir Wences says the biggest argument... Senor Wences. Oh, senor. Oh, sorry. No, not senor. 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 Not with the A at the end. That's just just me breathing. Senor Wences. (laughs) Says the biggest argument to rescaling your images is to save bandwidth for your visitor... To save bandwidth for your visitor and improving your download page rendering time. Especially if you're talking about mobile. Whenever I visit a site where the page renders and then I see one image coming in super slowly, I think to myself, what an idiot. Maybe <laughs> of the web dev? <laughs> Maybe. Who was the jerk who put a 7 meg JPEG on here? <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Maybe not the most charitable thoughts, <laughs> but it's what I think. So please, please is bold. So please scale your big images to the smallest size that still works for your particular use case. Okay. That makes sense. You're going at it old school, my friend. This is in reference, I guarantee you, to the question that came in regarding WordPress. Yes, okay. with, the pic- with the picture size things. Yeah. Yeah. So, with the picture size things. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's even got the dance moves when she says it. Uh, Senor Wences, here's the thing. We were talking about WordPress. So, with WordPress, if you have the most ginormous, most high-res image and upload it to WordPress, WordPress then takes that and scales it to the correct sizes for web access. So right. for the responsive design, for all that kind of stuff. If you go on to... Now, my website, category5.tv, is not WordPress, okay? However, well, you know what a, a good example would be? Baldnerd.com. Let's go there. If I head to my blog, baldnerd.com, you're going to see that sometimes I post pictures. What if we go to the NEMS page? Because I know there's pictures there. Okay, so on the NEMS page, if we scroll down, we're going to find a photo gallery. So, first of all, let's remember here, Senor Wences and anyone else who's wondering about this. This is a WordPress site. I uploaded the very most large file that I could find. Right. Okay, because we want the highest res. So if I right click on this particular image and view image, well, it's only 150 by 150. How's that possible? Okay, if I then go back and I click on it, it brings up a light box and it's going to show me that image in a high res. Mm -hmm. So if I view that image, which I can only do by right clicking on it and go open link in a new tab. There's the screenshot, and the screenshot is 1600 by 900. So that screenshot is probably, you know, that's probably native resolution to my laptop. Mm -hmm. So, but the fact is, is that when you upload something to WordPress, it does scale itself down to the various sizes that are required for your website. So you saw the 150 by 150? I never created that. WordPress did. Um, So you, it's a different thing when you run your own website. Right. So, and by that I mean it's not a WordPress or Joomla or something else that automatically does these things. Uh, so, if I had a website where I was creating the HTML, I was creating the images, then I have to now put the thought into creating those images and right. the right scales. So, that's where when you go to category5.tv, for example, this is not a CMS that's publicly available. This is something that I have developed from the ground up, and it is um, specifically. And we're, I'm just noticing that our internet just went down for a moment. We're on LTE internet, so that may be why we're having some trouble tonight as well. Um, with Category5.tv, you look at the images, and you'll notice that we have our thumbnails are 854 pixels wide. Right. That's all, you know, because I have created the system, I set that. So it, it creates those. So if I was to create a website and I had... 
too large of an image, then yes, it's going to be a long time to download on a slower connection. Mm -hmm. It's going to be brutal. Um, I need to personally optimize those because I am not using WordPress. I'm not using something that automatically rescales them. If you are, though, in the context of this question, then it does it automatically. That said, may I? Yes. There's a plugin, and our internet's back up. Um, there's a plugin that I use on some sites that really, really helps. So, because we're on, in the context of uh, WordPress, if you actually, uh, you know, if we go to the WordPress site and look for the uh, for the plugin, um, so we go WordPress.org/plugins, and that's the plugin repository. Slash, and I know where it is. Resize dash image dash after dash upload and you can just do a search in the plugin repository for resize image after upload this plugin will take it one step further um, and it will rescale all the images very very nicely this is a free plugin that uh, short pixel has brought out and what it does is it you specify okay what are the maximum image dimensions and it will rescale them using that as a maximum so it's beautiful because um, what it does is it rescales your master file oh, okay. where WordPress will leave the master file the same size and then scale down to the different various sizes for different responsiveness and, mm -hmm. and display types. This will actually resize the master file and it does a really nice job of doing it so you don't notice any lossiness. Um, so check that out as well. And that's another way to do it. So WordPress automates it. Doing it yourself, you're right. Um, you need to do it yourself with something like GIMP. Mm -hmm. Something like Mogrify, uh, which is part of Image Magic. Um, any uh, any of those kind of tools will help you to scale down if you're doing it yourself. Very cool. Thanks for the comments, questions. Get yours in category five TV. Click on Contact Us, and again, you can visit the forum now. You're gonna sign up. Sasha's gonna be there. Uh, I know. I meant so to do if it you this week. Like, meet I Sasha. You can actually go into the forum I, and say, I really wish Sasha would join the forum and say hello, and I'll bet you that will be her first reply. That's right. Please it will be it. hello. I need, yeah, to, hello I, I need to do it. You know, the truth of the matter is not a lack of intent. It's like a lack of follow <laughs> through. I just... I, my phone... There's something I knew I was going to yeah, do. Yeah. I knew I was going to do it. Here's what happens. I think I told about 10,000 people that I was That I was going to, to just join the forum, you know, you yep. know, whatever. I've been saying you know? it for weeks. And then I sit on my couch at the end of my day, and I sit down, and I open my phone, and there's something I was going to do. Maybe it was check Facebook. And then that's it. I'm lost forever. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. You're just looking I'm at watching, like, photos. exactly, yeah. videos of puppies Boy, dancing and stuff. Unreal. So, okay, here's the thing. Next week... I will I will update you on how I've joined the forum and how much I love it. I'm writing this down. Okay. It's happening. Sasha's joining the forum. I am so sorry. I do a lot I do a lot of wanting to do things. I don't do a lot of no, actually doing things. I am things. sending you an email every single day. Okay. I am bugging you on Facebook because I know that's all you're doing. And here's the thing too. Okay, so I'm I'm scrolling through Facebook yes. and there are these like videos that are running, but I'm trying to be quiet about it. So I'm not e I'm not even doing anything constructive because what I'm doing is I'm watching videos with no sound, imagining what the sound might be, and then stopping halfway through because an ad is starting soon. So then I just like, you know, continue looking. So I watch like the first one quarter of a whole bunch oh of videos yeah. with no sound, wasting my life, wasting my life. We don't put life. ads halfway through. <sighs> Boy, anyway, oh I should just be on the forum. See, the thing is, if I did that, then I could be doing something constructive with my time instead of... Talking with the viewers. Yeah. yeah instead Perfect. of just checking out. There's some good recipes one quarter of the way through. There's really an good ad. good recipes in 30 seconds or less. Yes. As if. Come on. <laughs> I've seen those cakes. I couldn't do that. I know that you guys understand. I know that some of you are like me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be alone in this. <laughs> Folks, it's been nice having you here, Sasha. Pleasure having you here, as always, and uh, looking forward to next week. We will talk to you then. We're going to get this whole Cody thing straightened out. Thanks for sticking yes. with us right to the end. Yes. We'll see you next Wednesday night. Good night. Have a great week.